that why and how upskilling cyber response and protection teams have changed. So for that, I would like to introduce today to you all to Range Force, which believes in leveling up SOC and cybersecurity professionals through advanced cybersecurity defense training while accurately and quantitatively assessing your team's existing skills. To know more about Range Force, and I would like to welcome Mr. Rupert Kohler on behalf of our sponsor, Range Force. He's going to take a session of 30 minutes with question and answer. So without any further delay, let's hear it from Mr. Rupert and let's learn about Range Force and the topic. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Rupert. Great, thank you very much. And uh, hello, everybody. Nice to, nice to see you, hear you. Uh, shame it's not um, in person, but uh, Zoom is, is okay for now. Uh, but seriously, thank you very much for, for inviting me to, um, uh, to present today. Let me just share my screen. Um, so my name is, is Rupert Collier and I'm the VP Sales uh, for International Business here at uh, Rangeforce. Um, and I just want to tell you a little bit about our uh, approach, um, the background to our company and, and why we feel that um, the concept of training, especially for, for technical people, has changed uh, forever. Uh, the colleagues were, were talking about um, university uh, university level, college level, um, teaching coding, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely agree. I think that is uh, that is crucial in today's world. Uh, the earlier you get involved in, in technology, the better, because uh, it will shape your future forever. But I think the way that we go about training people is, is going to change because it has to. Um, the old methodology of sitting in a classroom um, with paper in front of you and a pen uh, and somebody talking at you for six hours, and then two weeks later, you remember nothing. Um, that's a very old world, old school type of, of training. And, and Rage Force and other organizations as well have revolutionized the world of, of technical training. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to talk about it. So basically, just to give you a bit of background, we, we create accessible cybersecurity training experiences for cyber defense teams. Um, we're backed by several well-known organizations in the venture capital space um, and also Cisco as well have invested in the company uh, because they see the future of, um, of, of what we are, are trying to do. Our founders were involved in the NATO cyber range um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in just one second but a little bit of background to the company. We were founded in Tallinn in Estonia which is a, a small country, um, 1.2 million people. Um, that's probably not, not much more than a village in, in Bangladesh, but uh, in, in Europe, it's a whole country. And uh, it's, it's uh, just south of, of Finland, uh, just across the water from Finland. So quite, quite high up um, and uh, gets very cold in, in the winter, but it's a lovely place and the people are very friendly. Um, and we're, we're now based in Washington, DC. We moved our headquarters about two years ago to, to Washington, DC um, as part of our uh, initial series A uh, funding round. And the reason we um, started in Estonia, there is a very strong background in cybersecurity in Estonia. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, in 2007, there was a, a very large nation state attack. And this was the first major nation state attack. It happened predominantly through DDoS, um, but it had a significant um, knock on effect for the Estonian economy for around uh, 10 days or two weeks. Um, a lot of the critical national infrastructure, which at that time was very um, technology heavy. Estonia was uh, a very technology, technologically advanced country and all of their systems ran on um, the, the sort of technology that we see in other countries now. Um, but Russia uh, was the proposed uh, uh, guilty party here. Uh, and it was because Estonia, which was a former Russian uh, part of Russia, the USSR, uh, they wanted to move a statue and the Russians did not like that. They didn't want them to. Uh, and so they launched a cyber attack on, on Estonia. And it was a significant issue, um, and, uh, but some good came from it as well. And Estonia decided that they would specialize in cybersecurity. They would uh, beef up their systems. They would increase their, uh, their knowledge and their awareness of cybersecurity. And uh, since then, they have become a real powerhouse in the world in cybersecurity. If you look at the national... Uh, preparedness register for, for nations across the world. Uh, Estonia is always in the top three, um, along with other countries that you might not expect, like Greece. Um, but Estonia is, is really high up. They also have a conference every year called uh, Locked Shields. And this is a, a very 
large um, cyber range exercise uh, that is that is run with uh, nation teams, national teams. Um, I don't know if Bangladesh takes part. I haven't um, I haven't looked, um, but certainly there are uh, many nations involved, normally around uh, 40, 50 nations. And for several days, they go up against each other in a, a war game exercise. Uh, and this is held in Tan Tallinn. Um, and the reason it's held in Tallinn is because of the location of the NATO cyber range. Um, a cyber range, by the way, just in case nobody uh, understands what I'm talking about, a cyber range is a, uh, an off-network simulation space, a simulation network that you can run um, simulation exercises. So you emulate a corporate infrastructure or a national infrastructure, and then you, um, you run an exercise using the uh, cyber breach scenario of your choice. It could be ransomware, it could be a DDoS attack, it could be a phishing email or whatever. Um, and you test the incident response practices, you test the, uh, the way that people um, respond to the incident, how they go about uh, mitigating the problem, um, and you can monitor their activity while they are working. Excuse me. So you can monitor their activity while they are working and you can suggest uh, best practices, improvements um, and, and areas where, where people can, can get better. And this happens every year. Uh, and this is what Rangeforce, um, this is the background to Rangeforce. Our founders were involved in the creation of these exercises. Um, and this is where uh, our, our pedigree uh, stems from. So just to step back a little bit into um, ways that people learn and, and personality types. There's a, I'm sure you guys know, uh, the Myers-Briggs Personality Index. Uh, and the Myers-Briggs Personality Index kind of puts us into one of 16 boxes. And the, the four questions really that uh, the Myers-Briggs test um, asks is, are you outwardly or inwardly focused? How do you prefer to take in information? How do you prefer to make decisions? And how do you prefer to live your outer life? And according to your responses to these, you are then um, described as one of two types in each category. And the, the typical kind of um, technological technology type is um, referred to as ISTJ. And this is one of the more common personality types. I think it accounts for around about 16% um, uh, of, of the, of the uh, international uh, population. And it really um, kind of focuses around introversion. So normally technical people are thought orientated. Um, they're focused on their inner world rather than the exterior world. Um, they like in four them good because with uh, with creation of code or using technology you need to have um, a fairly structured mind you need to have a, a well kind of um, uh, a well structured way of thinking there's also something else that we need to take into account and that is learning styles and there are four main learning styles visual watching somebody do something auditory which is the traditional university method where you sit in a, a lecture theater and you listen to the 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 um, uh, the professor talking about the subject and you you, you um, uh, write down your notes, reading and writing um, and kinesthetic and kinesthetic is is uh, is kind of um, learning by doing and that's uh, for technical people. The kinesthetic way of learning is by far the most preferable way to learn others others maybe maybe use visual I, I'm, I'm in a sales role I'm, I'm very visual. Um, if I want to learn a new sport, for example, I watch YouTube videos. Uh, if I want to learn how to cook, for example, I won't read about it. I, will, I would prefer to watch it and, and I can kind of copy what people are doing. But I'm not a very technical person. If I was a technical person, I would predominantly prefer the kinesthetic way of learning, which is to physically do it yourself. And then finally, we also have what we call the learning pyramid. And this is something that somebody called Edgar Dale created. Now, this is, is disputed um, amongst certain um, areas of science. But...
Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a good question. I, I think there are there are lots of trends at the moment in in cybersecurity. I mean, um, we, we do see uh, a lot of you know um, very public data breaches. For example, the SolarWinds attack earlier in the year. Um, there are still very significant threats uh, and very significant problems from uh, rogue nations. And um, you know, I won't I won't go into who they are, but I think we all know who they are. Um, so this 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 high level national critical national infrastructure is a is a very significant issue. We saw it with um, the uh, the oil pipelines in in the south of the U.S. fairly recently. I think that's going to be a major issue. Everything is moving towards a technolo- technological um, infrastructure, uh, and we need to protect that infrastructure. And I think in order to do that, the tools that we deploy are only as good as the people d- that deploy them. So. Having um, a really well-rounded, continuous training program is going to be vital. You, you need to always keep learning. Every, every cybersecurity expert is only as good um, as what's inside their head. So you have to get as much as you can inside their head in order for them to, to really be professional in what they do. Um, I think on a, on a consumer level, um, we, we need to be prepared as well. I think there's still... A lot of um, ignorance, or, or maybe ignorance is the wrong word, but um, there's still quite a lot of laziness um, around uh, generations coming through the, the ranks now. So the millennial generation and, and the people behind them, there's a lot of um, there's a very lackadaisical attitude towards personal information. Um, and in order for them to uh, increase their status within the concept of a game or get to the next level within uh, a war game or something they're quite happy to give away their their personal information. And I think that's a very serious problem. Um, And I think one of the future areas for us at Rangeforce is to, at the moment, we focus very much on corporate infrastructure and uh, SOC teams and incident response teams and cybersecurity defense um, within within the context of of a corporate organization. I think one of the future things for us as a company is maybe to expand that out to, to a consumer, more of a consumer style, um, cyber training program and, and really uh, making sure that people understand the, the implications and the knock-on effects of your, your personal information. I, I'm not sure that everybody is completely uh, on board with that right at this moment, certainly in the UK and the US. Um, you know, there's a funny video on, 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 uh, on YouTube um, where people give away their passwords, you know, completely without any problem whatsoever. You know, uh, they're, they're initially a little bit cagey um, but when they are pushed, they just give out the, the name of their pet or whatever it may be and the year they were born. Um, go and look on, on, uh, on YouTube for that video. It's very funny. So I yeah. think, I think that's, that's one of the biggest issues that we face is the, um, the, the lackadais- lackadaisical, lazy nature of, of a lot of people, especially young people with their personal information. Thank you so much for that answer. And that actually answered my question. Thank you for beautifully answering that question. And thank you so much, Mr. Rupert, 